All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Lee Brown, who is an international sales motivational speaker, author of two books, one of which we're going to talk about a little more today, a Remax broker owner, and uh, just a very, a very busy person, right? And you're, where are you today, Lee? I'm actually in my office today in Concord, North Carolina. Excellent, North Carolina. So what we wanted to talk about today is your book, which is called Outrageous Authenticity, You Are Your Best Sales Weapon. So great, great title. So let's talk about what do you mean by outrageous authenticity? Well, the outrageous part is what kind of makes my heart sad, actually, because in today's world, where everybody's so afraid to say what they think because you might offend somebody. So you've come to this point where if somebody is just blunt and honest with you, it's perceived as very outrageous behavior. And the point of the whole book is that if you learn how to just say what you think without being hateful, but to own your beliefs and own your opinions, that's what authenticity is. And it kind of has to be outrageous in the world we're in, even though it shouldn't have to be that way. So, um, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And obviously, yeah, it's a, we live in a very, very, at a very strange time, I think, when it comes to people uh, feeling that they can be authentic because of all of the, you know, the pressures around them and, the, you know, the reactions of people and social media and whatever. So how do you how, how do you encourage somebody to start to feel confident enough to own their own, as you say, beliefs and be the person that they really are? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that you don't have to please everybody and everybody's not supposed to like you. For some reason, we've built this really sad little world that says we're supposed to be homogenous and the same beliefs and the same everything. And you never rock the boat and you never offend anybody because you want everybody to love you. Well, that's not who human beings are. And, you know, my grandmother said it, and yours probably did, too. If you have one good friend, you have more than your share. And mm -hmm. really, the people who love you most, they don't really care if they agree with you or not because they love who you are as a human. So if you're going to step out and be who you actually are, you have to go ahead and be at peace with the fact that somebody's going to disagree with you. And they might not like you. And they might not be your friend. And they might yell at you and then make fun of your hair. And they might make fun of everything about you. Because you called it social media. I call it criticism media. Mm -hmm. Because people look for something to criticize. And that's probably going to be you. But that's okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think my grandmother, yeah, she would have said the same, but she would have probably added on if you have one true friend, can you go get him to help you pick potatoes up in the top field? But <laughs> um, but the, the part about when you come to sales, right, is I think this is an area where buyers are craving authenticity on behalf of salespeople. I think this is maybe almost an outlier in the world we live in today. Because um, they're sick of being kind of sold to or feeling like, you know, the salesperson doesn't have their interests at heart. So have you discovered that in sales, that is a fantastic area to start to be really, really authentic? So look at online reviews as an example. If you see something that only has five star reviews, mm -hmm. you're immediately. Sure skeptical. Mm -hmm. Who who they paid? Did they pay pay somebody to write these reviews? I don't know if I trust them. And by the same token, if you're a salesperson who's like, oh, that is perfect. Oh, well, this one's perfect. This one's great. And you never say, well, I mean, that one looks good on paper, but let's discuss pros and cons. Then you're not giving somebody the full picture and they know that. And I look at it in real estate terms. If you're that person who's just unlocking doors and you mm -hmm. tell them every house is perfect, you know it's a lie because houses are unique because they're that giant financial commitment that people feel really schmoopy and emotional about. And you know when they're in the right house because their eyes start to sparkle. But you also know when they're in the wrong house and you got to say, look, y'all should not buy this one. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And your credibility rises tremendously so that when you do find the correct house, you haven't lost the ability to say, look, y'all, this one actually is the right house. 
Yeah, it's an interesting uh, thing about uh, when it comes to purchasing homes, right, or houses, right? It's one of the, if not the biggest financial uh, undertaking most people um, engage in, yet it's one of the ones that they actually spend some of the least time on. Right. I mean, sometimes, you know, they'll go view houses, go view them for, you know, 30 minutes and then turn around and say, oh, okay. Lee, this is great. I'll buy it. Sure. Um, so how do you in, in situations like that? Obviously, that's a great opportunity for you to really differentiate yourself with your authenticity, like you just said, by saying, yeah, uh, sure, this is a choice, but maybe not the best one. Well, the the biggest thing about this is that you're exactly right, that it's mind boggling that the average home buyer doesn't do serious research before they pull the trigger as opposed to the Honda Pilot they just bought where they ripped apart consumer reports and they know the mileage per gallon and the difference between the 16 and 17 models and then with the house they're like ah you know it's the house <laughs> so it becomes a moment where you as the realtor have to be so deeply educated that you can make up their lost ground so if my clients walk into a house and it's the first one they've seen and they really want to buy it and I can see that sparkle because after enough time in the business, you know, I've got to be able to fill the gaps for them so that they can make a good decision. But you also don't let people jump into bad decisions without coaching them first. And I'm not saying they shouldn't buy it, but I'm saying they shouldn't buy it without the education. And that's where as a good salesperson, you fill the gap. And I think that's a that's a great point that you're talking about here about, you know, the salesperson filling in the gaps, because I do think that that's what really does differentiate great salespeople in the end is that, yes, we live in a world where people where we perceive that the buyer has all the information they could possibly need about a product and they don't need you. But the reality is they ha they may have a lot of information, but A, they may not, un may not understand that information or they may have consumed it in the way we consume most information today and that's in sound bites, right? Um, so you have a great opportunity to say, yeah, you may have some ideas about what you want, but let me expand on this a little. Well, think about it in terms of WebMD. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling good and you go to WebMD, everything's cancer. <laughs> Everything is going to lead you to the worst possible conclusion mm -hmm. because you're not filtering the information with somebody's knowledge. And that's why you go to the doctor if you know something's wrong so that you can take the information and filter it through their knowledge. Same thing with houses. If you look on Reddit, good Lord, you would never buy a house ever because you'd be panicked by other people's opinions, but it's just information until you filter it through a salesperson's knowledge. And then you've got to remember, too, that you take all that knowledge and you get somebody to that buying point. And this is the biggest gap I see right now for actual salespeople is they're so panicked about being called a salesperson because they think it's icky that they don't ask the sales question. And the sales question is not anything that's really rocket science. It's you, you want to buy this. And then if they say yes, fine, move forward. And if they say no, you say, okay, let me find you something else. But too many people are getting frozen at that point because they're afraid of that rejection. This goes back to what we talked about earlier. They're so anxious to please everyone that they can't themselves take a no. And you've got to know how to take it. Yeah, and I love that because the, this is this is a, a pet peeve of mine as well, is this idea about people don't want uh buyers or people to perceive that they're a salesperson well guess what they already know you're a salesperson so you can call yourself whatever you want um they still know you're a salesperson so why not own it yeah they want you to be one they mm -hmm. want you to help them get to the next stage because a good salesperson is just helping somebody transition mm -hmm. you're not pushing them you're not being aggressive but you're you're guiding them. It's no different than as a parent. If you don't tell your kids to put their shoes on because we got to leave the house, they won't. Children <laughs> cannot tell time and they'll stay in the house all day. <laughs> but you say, put your shoes on. It's time to go. They put their shoes on and it's time to go. And they don't feel like you were trying to say, hey, well, kid, it's time to go to school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so one of the things that you mentioned, um, the, you know, you obviously highlight in your book is this idea of confidence. And I think that's maybe 
one of the things that a lot of salesperson salespeople maybe suffer from, you know, a lack of confidence. And it's it's understandable you're in a rejection business, right? Where you're going to be rejected more times than you're going to get a yes normally. And let's face it, you have been portrayed in popular culture in a pretty negative way. And so all of this is coming on top of you. So how do you advise people how to how they can build confidence in themselves so they can project confidence? You have to have a support system of people who love you. And that may or may not be past clients. It may or may not be business colleagues. It could just be your mama. (laughs) But when you have somebody who has you under their wing, it's much easier for you to step out and take risks with clients and with your business. So I love to tell salespeople to, you know, call your mom every morning or call your best friend, call somebody that believes in you. And so you can talk about something that's not work related and that fills you up. And then when you start making phone calls, if you run into a no or 14 no's or a 300 no's, if your bucket was already full, well, they took a dip out, but mm-hmm. it doesn't knock you down to nothing. If you start your day off, the first thing you do is with social media, first of all, you'll feel inadequate. Second of all, you'll feel overwhelmed. And then you start calling clients or prospects or leads, and then you get no, no, no. Well, you weren't full, so you get to empty so fast you just stop. There's so much power in how we allow other humans to make our existence better. And it sounds really mushy gushy, but it's absolutely true that when you have better personal relationships, it's easier for you to serve people. Cause then, you know, even if they hate me, <laughs> my mama loves me. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, because I think if you don't have that solid foundation yourself, it's very hard to go out into the world and, and put yourself out there. And I think people often, you know, they spend far too much time thinking in macro terms rather than in micro terms about the things that surround them. And your point about social media, I think, yeah, if you start off your day at social media, you are going to, um, I mean, social media are just snapshots of points in time, right? But we, as how we're wired today, we fill in all the gaps. And I go, oh, my goodness, look at Lee. She has got the greatest life and my life sucks in comparison. But you might have had a good two minutes right there. And maybe, you know, who knows what else is going on. But we've become very consumed by that. So I like that idea of really setting yourself up. Um, positively. And then you talk about branding yourself uh, consistently for long term success. I mean, I'm a big believer in building your own personal brand. But what do you mean by this? Once you know who you are, it's so much easier to put that into the messaging that you put out there to build your business. And real estate to me is a an easy example. Yesterday, I was eating breakfast at my favorite breakfast restaurant with my family and with our family best friends. So there's eight of us at the table. We're looking at the menu. It's got those little advertisements in it. And we said, how many realtors are in here? We started counting and there were six. And I said, now let's look at these six advertisements. What in the world tells you anything about any of them that sets them apart. Why would I call one over the other six? And there was nothing to differentiate. And when you start looking at it that way, you realize that if I, as somebody in the profession, can't see a difference, what's the end user going to see? So when I look at what my messaging is and what I'm cultivating with my team and in our office and what's our culture, who are we, what kind of experience do we want to put out there, and then how does that translate into our actions? We came up with the hashtag more than houses several years ago because our real estate business is built to say we are about more than houses. So we do community work with Habitat for Humanity and with the Battered Women's Shelter. We did a tampon drive to help stock their shelves when that was going on last fall. We do political advocacy work to protect property rights and all of that blends into what kind of a real estate experience we want to provide, which is that There might be a good realtor out there that sticks your house in the MLS and sticks a sign in the yard, but we want to be more than that. So I use all those as an example to say you have to figure out your unique value proposition to the market. What what do your clients say about you? That's where you're going to figure out what this branding message looks like is to call those five past clients and ask them, why did you use me? What was the experience like? And look for some key words that would tell people 
that you indeed are different amongst your competitors in the marketplace. And then that bleeds into what you say on social media. That bleeds into what you write in a newsletter and how you interact with people. It all starts to feed together, but it won't ever happen if all you're focused on is copying somebody else and never figuring out yourself. Yeah, and I think what you what you just said there is a great um, it's it's a great example of what faces most people in in most markets today is the commoditization, right? Where buyers, rightly or wrongly, perceive that products or services are pretty much all the same, interchangeable. So you have to add something more than just you know what your core offering is in order to differentiate yourself, right? So you have Walmart and that works and that's all commoditized. Mm -hmm. You don't go there for brand names. If you find one, you're like, what are they doing in Walmart? Hmm. You meet, they actually downgrade that brand. Whereas if you go to Neiman Marcus, your expectation is that you'll find brands and you expect to pay more because you expect to have an experience when you go there. And we know this, and I can say that to everybody who's watching this because they have encountered Neiman Marcus. And so their affiliation with that brand is one of quality and experience and high end because they have consistently developed that message to the point where you don't see them advertising a big Labor Day sale or a big Black Friday sale. They don't have to do that because it's not who they are. Yeah, and I think that's a great point to end on is that the idea of figuring out who you are, like you said, how your your um, real estate business has figured out who you are in the broadest terms, right? It's up to salespeople individually and obviously with their organizations to figure out who they are, right? Absolutely. And if who you are doesn't mesh with the organization where you're located, mm -hmm. then you have to go find the place where there's a values fit because if there's a values clash, it's going to happen at some point that a consumer gets caught in the crossfire. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Lee, this has been fantastic. Uh, before we go, uh, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you? The easiest way to learn more about me is at leebrown.com. That's L-E-I-G-H brown.com, where you can get directed to my real estate website if you need information in the Charlotte, North Carolina market or to my speaking and consulting side where I offer small business coaching for clients all over the country. And I also enjoy being a keynote speaker at conferences and conventions. Plus, there's a bunch of other stuff there as well. So I'd welcome any interaction. And you should probably follow me on YouTube because my videos are slightly comedic in nature and also helpful. Excellent. Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, and CRM. Lee Brown, thank you very much. And I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.